So I'm going to be behind the camera here, as you can guys can see. And the first thing we're going to go here is we're going to get this dead branch off of this cottonwood tree here. Let's see if I can zoom out a little bit. And we want to get, again, dead wood that's off the ground so it's not full of moisture and everything. And this pretty much qualifies. So we're going to, Rob over here has to go get that. He's, he's got his saw and his hat. <laughs> and we're going to make some uh, YouTube stardom here. All, All right, right, go ahead, do your thing here, Rob. So Mike's going to film for Rob, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to film for me. Oh, why is this thing not turning? Can you get up there? That's what I want to try. I got to get through all the thorn bushes first. <laughs> oh yeah, you, oh hang on it, I bet you'll break off. But you might not even need to saw it. Go out, go out on the limb a little farther. Oh, I guess not. Look at that crazy monkey. The kid thinks he's in his 20s still. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Where are the old parts? <laughs> now the uh, the tree that we're cutting up here, we're taking the dead branch off. We're harvesting the dead branch off of it is a cottonwood, and um, in northern Illinois, cottonwoods are the most prolific fire uh, or bow drill set trees that we've got. You know, and then in the very northern part of the state, we've got some cedar, and I, I know there's a lot of people that plant cedar in their house for decoration and, the, and all that. But uh, predominantly, cottonwood is going to be our uh, tree of choice because it's everywhere. Save the bark. See how the, save that stringy bark stuff. That's your tinder bundle. Right on. Scrap stuff falls right off. Yes. Well, that's why I was pointing at that branch when we were out here the other day. That's what you're looking for, how when the bark just is peeling off like that, because the inner bark is all dry and, and fibrous. That'll take a spark off a of ferro rod like no tomorrow, too. Just, uh, throw that down. I will collect it. Another good tree in our area for uh, bow drill fires is a box elder. A box elder kind of looks, um, the leaves that it has look just like poison ivy, only it's a tree instead of poison ivy. It's a fast growing weedy tree. Yeah, fast growing weedy tree. It's soft though, so it's, it's hard to keep them in tune. You know, they're, they're so soft that you might spin one coal out of your fireboard and you won't be able to get another one out of it because the socket's all rounded out and everything and you can't get a precision spin anymore. I know they're a lot of fun to pull down the tractor. <laughs> <laughs> Where'd you get that saw, Rob? Walmart. Awesome. That's like my $7 folding saw from Ace Hardware yeah, with, the, five bucks. with the pine handle. <laughs> the wing nut. 
Well, you could buy this one for five bucks, or you could buy the one that has the uh, B G on it. Uh huh. For twenty. Oh yeah, yeah, gotcha. Bear grills, you know. All right, now. Rob, you're doing it wrong. You're not supposed to mount the tree. Oh, relax. <laughs> you can do it better. I encourage you to. No. Right about now, you'd have to call the fire department and jump down the ladder and get me down. <laughs> Assuming I could get up in the first place. If my finger wasn't hurt, I could get up there. I'm just still kind of on injured reserve, so I got to be careful what I do. I was at physical therapy this morning, and just the stuff we did there, I, my finger was freaking killing me. Okay, we have a gold awesome. mine of now gold go drills. go back over there, so my can because you got to remember this camera is like 80 years old, so I it have to be really far away to see anything. From the 1980s means it's 80 years old. Yes. So here, here it is. Rob has his, uh, Rob has his material for his bow drill set, and I, I can see probably. Want to touch it? <laughs> <laughs> so now we're gonna march back to camp, and we're gonna cut this up and and have some fun. So I'm gonna kill my camera here. Where's my fade button? I got a button to fade it out. I gotta use that because doing the special effects on the computer suck. Oh, here, show that. Where's those pieces that I was supposed to get that I didn't get? I wonder if this thing has a macro setting. I don't even remember. What about the C ret mean? Menu, focus. Be right up by the lens. I don't know if I, I this might not even have Are you a recording? Macro. Of course I'm recording. Okay. Are we angler? Yeah, bring your hand on one. See, this gets all stringy and stuff like this. This will take a spark off a ferro rod, like, instant. Inner bark off a of cottonwood is, like, one of the best fire-starting materials there is. It's, it's almost as good as, like, cotton ball and Vaseline, as long as it's dry. I think Mike would have a ferro rod for us if he didn't have so much shit in his pockets. I actually do have a ferro rod for us, but... Are we going to light this in Rob's hand? But I think Rob will be the one to do it. Yeah. How does that thing work? Good. That's a miniature yeah. blast match looking. Is that a blast match or is that a something co a copy of it? Oh, I see. Copy. You gotta use the thumb. I don't know if that. You gotta break it up a little more, I think. Nope. You're like spraying it all over the place, Rob. You wanna try starting this in your hand? No. Doing stuff with my hand is how I almost got my finger cut off. Yeah, that's good. We'll do it on the ground later where you have some positioning. Put it in your pocket and save bits. <laughs> we got plenty more. All right. I this thought it would make a cool, cool shot. $7 Walmart one. This thing's pretty cool. It just started carrying it. That's what I put on my neck knife. The rod out of that on my neck knife. Oh, yeah, yeah. And then when you're done with it, it's just... That's pretty cool. I like this thing. Probably should have done that on the camera. I'm a big fan of anything that uses a fire steel. There it is. There you go. Get this all nice and broke up and make the fibers real fine. See how this just comes apart like this? This is just a gold mine here. Any caveman would would be absolutely loving this stuff. I'm gonna put that in my pocket. Yeah, that would be cool. I I haven't conquered corded, you know, natural. Well, the one I made yesterday, I think I made it too quick. Yeah. Well, what you were showing me yesterday, I think will work. All right. So, back on the camera here, we've got all this uh, all this inner bark that we have to get out and save. So, what I'm going to have the guys do first before we do any cutting or anything is we need to peel the bark off of this and save this stringy inner bark in a nice dry place and. 
um, in in this particular case, I'm gonna I'm just gonna throw it on top of my foraging bag, you know, because we gathered a whole bunch of tinder bundle material yesterday, so we can you know have enough to burn a bunch of coals in practice, so I can teach them how to blow that in the flame. So why don't you guys come down here and start stripping the bark off this thing, at least at least up to here. We should probably collect sticks and all the other shit too. You can strip the entire thing. You don't have to stop where we were gonna cut. The more tinder bundle material you guys get off it, the better. Here, here's some more of that here. stuff that I Same collected thing. earlier. The ground is pretty dry today. All right, as we can see here, we've collected a big pile of leaves. The guys have all their sticks and, and wood and material. I'll come over here and we'll look at Rob. This is this is Rob's pile of leaves. Uh, we also have our bark that we're going to break into our tinder bundles and our pile of sticks, and we're now organizing all these into bundles that we're going to make our fire out of. Rob, make, make your skinnier sticks longer, like this. Make them about the length from finger thumb to fingertip that I got out. Now one of the reasons we want them long is because fire rises. So we want to have length for, we want to have the length for the fire to climb the stick. All right, so we're starting to build the fire structure here. And what we did is we created a little teepee and we started sticking all the little sticks vertically into teepee and now we're adding some leaves into that. These leaves are gonna be our accelerant. Kind of like this is what gives it that going up like gasoline look. And then we're gonna continue building more on, on top. Now, Mike, what I want you to do is I want you to add more pyramiding some larger sticks into this pyramid because otherwise you're not going to have the strength and this I don't want the structure to go and just collapse. So I want to add some reinforcement along the sides. Those are kind of going to be like the framework of your structure here. So let's, while he's doing that, let's go look over at Rob. Now Rob is doing exactly the opposite of Mike. He has a, a very heavy amount of framing and structuring going on over here and not as many leaves. So the, the ideal that we're going to have is going to be somewhere in between the two of them. Now what you can do here, Rob, is start sticking some sticks up vertically so that it starts being kind of wide. Don't lean them, stick, just stuff them in the dirt. Good, now just do that around here and then when you have this, when you've got them coming around here and you've got this gapping, throw some leaves in there and then that'll, that'll contain the leaves. And again, the reason we're putting the leaves in here is because the leaves are our accelerant. Basically, the leaves will start to go up and that'll create a draft. And just kind of that, yes, that's a big part of it too. Yeah, you're right. The leaves will go up and it'll create a draft. But also it keeps fire going and fire is hot. And that helps to ignite the sticks better. Yours is a very top-centric oriented fire here. <laughs> you, need, you need a lot more reinforcement along the sides there, Mike. You right. need to build an actual frame. You don't, you don't really have a frame there. Of the medium stuff or the fine stuff? Um, bigger than the medium. These guys, some of these bigger guys over here. Make, make a structural frame around it. If you have to, because you're, you're kind of in the middle here, take a nice heavy one and run it right down the center on a little bit of an angle and push it into the dirt here. Maybe do three of those to sort of shore up your, uh, your structure a little bit. 
There you go. Maybe another one over here and another one over here. So your tripod will now have six sides. Here you go. Hexapod. Yes, a hexapod. A hexapod works, an octagon works. You know, I, I'm just trying to be simple here today. I don't want to overdo the fire structure because we have a lot to work on. All right, so the guys got their structures pretty well put together now, unless Rob knocks us over here. Don't knock it over, Rob. Okay. And, um, you know, Rob's... Anybody want a slug? No, I don't want a slug. Rob's is a little overbuilt here, so I think when he gets his stuff's his tinder bundle, he might have to add a little air into that. And Mike's, Mike's is underbuilt, so his is going to go up like lighting thermite on fire, but it's going to collapse right away. So he's going to have to make sure all his larger sticks are really close at hand so he can start adding to it, um, you know, maybe using the crosshatch method right away as soon as this fire gets going. But now, so we're ready to go on to the next step now. And the next step is going to be to be building our tinder bundle. And if, if Rob, if you want to grab, Rob, grab some of our, our bark over there, Big handful of it. Grab all of it. Okay, much? Um, big handful. Two big handfuls. Yes, like what Rob has. That's what we want, like what Rob's got. Just the inner or you want somebody all, else? Grab all of it. Here, I got a bunch over here for you. Okay. I'm going to pull back and get a wider view of you guys. Let me get this thing out of the way. Yeah, this is like total YouTube quality filming here. All right, so I got the guys over here. Now what I want you guys to do is to start mashing that up and, and sort of, here, let me uh, put this on here. Well, give me a minute to set my camera where I want it. All right, give me a piece of the bark. All right, this is what we want to do, all right? First, we want to scrape with our fingernails and everything, scrape all the inner bark out of it. Once all the inner bark is gone, this, this we can throw it in the fire later, it'll be fine. It'll help the, once it gets going. Now we take the bark and we roll it in our hands like this. The inner bark. Yeah, we take the inner bark and we roll it in our hands like this. You see all the dust coming off? All the dust is coming off. We want to do it close to the ground to save that. And we're going to end up with all these little fibers. Let me go over by the camera here. So we're going to end up with all these little fibers. And those fibers are going to make, is going to make our tinder bundle. All right, all right. <laughs> Rob, give me your tinder bundle here for a minute. No. Take a picture. All right, take your picture. Give me this. All right. As you can see here, we've made our we've made our tinder bundles. They look like cool little bird's nests. And this is what we're going to put our ember in to blow it into flame. So I'm going to give Rob his back. And I want to show a technique real quick. So let me let me adjust the camera. I should leave this as a secret so people have to pay me to teach them, but zoom the camera in right there. Okay, I think I'm over here. Where's my, give me my, give me my, my forging bag here. Oh, my camera flopped. Look at this. It's dead. No, I got to do this with it. Yeah. I got to do that. Yeah, this is... All right. So, in my foraging bag, I got a ton of tinder bundle material that we, we forage. Frickin' leaves out of here. Now, what, what I do with these, when I make my tinder bundles... All right, the first thing I do is I roll them up 
like this. Just like I'm gonna roll up my wool blanket or my sleeping bag, I roll it this way and then I turn it on, 90, on a 90 degree angle and I roll it up the other way. When I get a nice tight little ball, I squeeze that little ball in the middle So I have my hole here. This hole here is where I'm going to be sticking my ember in. I'm going to put this, this light fluffy stuff goes in there. I don't know why it's on the end. That, this is a piece of cattail. It'll extend my coal. So I want that in the hole. And then once we get my ember, I'm going to drop the ember in there and I'm going to close it up and I'm going to start blowing it into flame. So that's how, that's the way that I set my tinder bundles up and I make sure that I have my bird's nest a nice tight little shape and everything. So I'm going to set that right here for now. And uh, all right, what we're doing here is I've got Rob cutting our pieces of cottonwood here. Rob, so do a measurement for it, so show everyone how long it is. I don't know if Mike's penis is bigger than just, mine. Just, just. Oh my God. <laughs> then use yours. Go use the use this thing so. I, All right, that's how big we're going to make our, out of these pieces, we're going to make our fireboards and uh, possibly even our handholds and maybe even our spindles. We might have to cut extra pieces for the spindles, but that's okay. So right now, I'm going to uh, put this down here. It's going to flip an angle again, isn't it? I need like a level. Ow, I just stepped out of Born. Fuck. Okay, welcome how to the, my world. How the hell did that get in there? And it's going to take like a month to get out. <sighs> no, I pulled it out before it went in the skin because I said something like that. All right, this is going to be, this is from my kit. This is going to be my fireboard, okay? It's already, we already started cutting it, and I want to show you the dimensions. It's going to be the width of two thumbs, okay? And it's going to be the height of one thumb, and then I like to make the length the same as, you know, tip from uh, tip of thumb to tip of finger, just like everything else. Um, however, the length really doesn't matter, so long as it's not too short. And too short is going to be this. I don't know if you guys can see my foot here. All right, the board has to extend all the way to this end of the foot. And far enough on this side of the foot to where you can make a socket and burn they do your burn in and your notch and, and then do your spin and your ember. So long as you have at least enough length to do that, it's long enough. And then of course on the other end of the spectrum, it could be a hundred feet long, doesn't matter. The, this, the length, the wider part of the length is really up to personal preference, but just for the sake of teaching a class and giving a specific number, that's the distance that I make them all, okay? All right, so. What we got to do now is we got to split these in half. So you guys got to, uh, first thing, though, before we do that, give me one of these. We want to look at our thumbs here. All right, where's my shoe? We got to be right directly in under my shoe here, kneeling down. Um, am I, is my feet in the shot? Who no. cares? Okay. It's for you too, dude. <laughs> All right, what we got to do now is we need to split this so we can make our fireboard. And let me, uh, where's mine? Where's one of mine? Here's mine. All right, so we got to get this piece right here out of this log. So what we're going to do is we're going to split this in half. Once we split it in half, it's going to be two thumbs wide. And then they, we're going to have to trim the edges off so it's all squared up and everything. And we're going to want it to be one, thi one thumb thick. So why don't you go ahead and split that. I think right right here it'll be well, the camera will see it. I'll make sure we can. However you want to split it. Yeah, you're good right there. Well, I just got a saw mark that's going to damage some of it. Just take the other side of it then. Don't cut your finger off. Get a nice little hammer stick. There you go. Yeah, you know, because I'm injured from 
almost cutting my finger off. I'm kind of paranoid about the finger cutting thing. There you go. That piece you just grabbed, by the way, is also cottonwood. It's just not aged as much, so we can make a kit out of that, too. Rob, why don't you start cutting that in half? You need a bigger knife? No, I'm just I'm taking off a knot. Okay. I'm going to use Mike's hatchet. Okay. I usually just use my little survival knife, but... Sometimes I make a wedge out of a piece of wood laying around, and I'll get the knife far enough down to where I can hammer the wedge in there, and then I make the wedge do the rest of the work, so I'm not beating my knife up too bad. Our Battlestar Galactica stick there here. You it's go. Funny Galactica. Galactica. Of course, all the YouTube viewers have no idea what that inside joke means. <laughs> so then. Okay, now that you got it split. Try to square it up a little yep, bit. Yep, square it up. Now you're going to make two of them squared up like that. Right. I want this one two thumbs wide. Correct. I just want to take just a little bit off. I want a little bit right here. Yep, you want it nice and flat. One thumb thickness. Yeah, or a little bit. Just I like to make them a hair more than one thumb just so I have room to play with. And then I shave it down the rest of the way with my knife. If you're having too much trouble with that, just take your knife and shave it. I mean, it's a fairly soft wood. You should be able to do that. All right, real quick. That's going to take me a while to... Oh, your knife is too small, dude. <laughs> Here. <laughs> You got a real knife? I got, I got the Leatherman. Here, use use a real knife. All right, real quick though. See how this is curving like that? Right. We got to get rid of that. So your um, board might end up being a little short. So I know how to take care of yeah. that one. Okay. There you go. That piece of wood you're using for an anvil, don't kill it because no, we need to make parts out of that. I think he's using that to prevent from killing his hatchet, which is more important. All right, so we're back out here in the woods. Let me zoom out. Can I zoom out? No, can only zoom in. All right, so we get all freaking all the way over here. So. All right, so the guys have their, their fireboards made. We've got a fireboard here, and Rob has two fireboards. He's got a handhold down over there. And we have our, our handholds. And you can see the handhold is roughly the width of your hand. It's got a nice curved surface to it. And then we're gonna put the point that the spindle is gonna spin in right in the middle so we can you know, really get bare down there and get our pressure in. The next step is gonna be to make the spindles. So what we're going to do is we're going to come over to our piece here and we're going to cut another section off that gives us about that length and then we're going to square that off and cut that to shape uh, to make our spindle. So that's our next step. Why don't you guys um, start cutting the pieces that you need. If you have to, you can cut one here and one here. Like if you cut one here. Yeah. You'll trim the edges off to make it a square, square, and then, up. Yeah, and then take the square pieces and cut it off to make it an octagon, mm -hmm. and then from there we'll do the rest. Well, hang on a minute. The black shit on your hands. Where? Oh, 
Oh. Your fire yesterday. All right, guys. Pay attention here, Rob. Like the next step is going to get you to get our bow. Our bow is going to. You want it to be the same length as your arm, armpit to fingertip. And you want to have just a little bit of a curve to it. I like to make mine out of a hardwood so they last forever. Um, some people make them out of like live right off a tree so it's a little flexible. I don't like to do that. I like to have some stability to them. And then I adjust my tension by putting a slot in the back of it. I'll show you guys how to do that in a minute. So your next mission is to go find yourselves your bow. Ready? Yeah. Ready. All right. Scamper off and get your bow. Uh -huh. Post-apocalyptic camping training. I like that. Yep, that's the self trip. All right. Ow! Crap! I just stepped in something again. Welcome to my world. All right. So the guys have their uh, their bows, and I've got mine here. And there's a couple features on this that we're going to have to talk about. And hopefully, you guys can see this. First thing we got to do is we got to file a notch on the front end of the bow, okay? And then on the back end of the bow, we're gonna need to start splitting it just the way we split the wood because the, the bow string, where's my bow string here? The bow string is gonna go into the slot like this and then get wrapped around and then, wrapped around, yeah. There we go and then tucked in tight like this, and that, that gives me the adjustability of it so I can adjust the tension of my, my bowstring. So that's what I'm gonna do with these guys next. You know, we got, uh, we got Rob over here who's just completely lost interest and he's making cordage now. It's for my bow drill string. <laughs> <laughs> you wanna do this the right way, don't you? Yeah, right, yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. 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 All right, Rob. I'm on it. I'm on it. I got this boss down my fucking asshole. That's the right. <laughs> I'm I'm recovering from an injury, so I can't do any of this. Oh, my hernia hurt. Your hernia hurts. All right, over here. This is Rob. He's he's splitting his uh, the end. Did you seriously just leave your knife on the ground for everybody to step on in bare feet? Maybe. That would be Rob. <laughs> Maybe. There you go. Why do I keep now watch how far it splits. Don't let it split too far. You just got it just enough. It's got to split just enough because you don't want to break. You you know, end up ruining your thing. Oh, heaven forbid you ruin your thing. Yeah, that would suck. Yeah, we've been out here too long making all these silly parts. If I run my thing, I would just borrow yours. No. <laughs> John, what's that? You jam a line in there and wrap it around, and that's all you really need. Oh, that notch is fucking awesome. That's perfect. Yes. Can you hear that? Fucking awesome. Nice. Oh, it's perfect. That too. There you go. Bear Grylls boy pulls out his big lighter. Bear Grylls is a moron. He's a much wealthier moron than I am. I was about still. to say, he's the most wealthy survival <laughs> expert there is. And right. I don't think he's a moron. I think he just, he knows how to market. He knows I think he's got a marketing yeah, team. Yeah, anyway, yeah. all right, I'm on camera here, guys, hey, so hey, shut hey, up. Hey, 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 hey. All right, so what we got to do now is we got to take our, our cordage. I've got some, like, old-fashioned twine here. 
and I put a loop on the end of it, and I'm going to make a slip knot. Now our slip knot is going to go on the front end into the notch, just like this. So fit in the notch, I'm going to pull it nice and tight, just like that. Now I'm going to stretch the, the cordage all the way across, put it into my slot, so let it loosen up just a little bit. And then I'm going to tighten it down so it pulls the split tight. That way it'll hold and lock in. And then I'm just going to stuff it in the end here, just like this, to hold it in place. And then that'll give me enough, um, enough play to when I put my spindle in here that it'll tighten up and it'll allow me to spin the spindle in the fireboard. Like this. See, that might slip up the spindle a little bit. Now, let's go on the other side. It doesn't have to be too tight, because you remember your spindle's got to fit in there, so just give it some play. And then just wrap it around nice and tight so it squeezes the it's, it squeezes the wood in and then just sort of splits it off on the end there. I just stuck it back. And if it starts slipping, we'll come up with some way to tighten it more in the back. Are you ready, Rob? Yeah. Okay, I'm going to get my spindle here real quick. Where did I put my spindle? There it is. Actually, I should just get the whole flipping set. Alright, you guys can start paying attention here. I'm gonna go demonstrate real quick how to do this, and then we're gonna we're gonna have to get uh, some pieces of bark for the next thing. Rob, you gonna pay attention here or no? Hey man, take it easy. Huh? I'm listening, but I'm also doing something. Okay, watch. All right, so what we're gonna do to load the bow? Wait, I can do this without falling over here. Is we're going. Yes, not that. We're going to put it in upside down first. So the part that goes into our handhold goes in upside down. Just like that. Not too tight. Okay, this is... There we go. It'll pop in real nice. Then we set the spindle into the socket. And then our handhold fits on top of our spindle. Just like this so that we can rock it back and forth. There we go. So that's that's the point we're going to get to next. Now, now that we have that together, it's time to start making our notches, or our sockets, and our, our little jewel point. If you guys want to give me one of your, give me your spindle real quick. What side were we? Okay, we what we're going to have to do now is we take our spindle, I'm going to use the stubbier side for this piece, and we're going to measure it so we know where it's at. We want to leave some space between the edge of the spindle and the edge of our board here, all the way around. And then we're going to take our knife, and we're going to mark the point right there. And then we're going to drill that in and start making our socket. So I'm going to give this to Mike, and he's going to do that. I didn't do it for him. I just want to demonstrate for the camera. And just make sure you're a little, make sure you're like a, yeah, that's far enough back. That's good right there. as deep as you can get it, really. Well, I can throw a hole right through it. Well, we don't want to go all the way through. But the object here is we want to make a socket that's the same shape as this, but we're going to do it mostly by burning it in rather than using that. So we want to get it 
a nice wide piece, but not all the way to this, because I want to do the final matching by spinning this into the fireboard. Find something here that's not poison ivy. Well, the oil's in the poison ivy should move that spindle really well. Yeah, the then it's going to start smoking and we'll inhale that, and that just sounds like a whole lot of fun. <laughs> All right, well, well, Mike is uh, starting his uh, fireboard. I want to talk about the handhold here. Now, this is this is my handhold. It's kind of a goofy shaped one. On what we're going to do is in the middle of the handhold, you're going to make a depression, and you make a very very small depression. This is very important. This is a jeweled point. You want as much free spin on this as you possibly can. So this this point here has to be as small as it can be without actually having the spindle slip out and pop off. So if, you know, if it's popping off, you got to just make it a little bigger and a little bigger. And I have the correct one on this side until it sticks. Once you've got that, we're going to lubricate this with a nice fresh green leaf, the leaf that you pull off a plant that's not all the poison ivy that we have here. And you're going to smash it up between your fingers and place it into the, the little jeweled point. And then you're going to use your finger to kind of, or your spindle to kind of mash that in there real good. And that gives the natural lubrication that you're going to need to get maximum, fr you know, friction-free free spin on the, on the uh, handheld side. Now, obviously, on the fireboard side, where you want the heat, you want maximum friction. So we're going to show you how to how to do that in a moment. As soon as he's done with his, are you done here? Tell me, deeper? Yeah, got to match. Go go a little deeper than that, just a little. Deeper than that. We're going to bore through that whole thing, so. That's probably going to be a little too thick. It's going to get good friction. I want to give this a shot. Yeah, all right, give that a shot. We'll, we'll see what it does. Working with what I got. Yes. All right, finish that one up in a minute. I want to do something for the camera here. Grab your, your handhold. All right. Now, what Mike's going to do for his handhold is he's going to take the jewel point side, right there, whatever side you're going to use, it's up to you. You know, your, your longer, thinner side is the one for jewel point. He's going to mark where he wants it, and you're, you're going to want it so that the center point of your, your palm, where you, where you can lay the most pressure in on it, you want the jewel point right underneath that. So mark that. Make a nice, a small little point. This starter that you have here mm -hmm. is too big for the jewel, so don't let the jewel get this big. If you can spin it and you can hold it without it popping out, that's where you want it. Got it? All right, reach up and grab a leaf off that tree above your head there. Now smash that up in your fingers and put that into the point or the, the jewel socket.
yes, juice here is better. So I'm gonna. All right, so I'm going to uh, make my socket here in my kit. I can give these guys a little bit of an example. All right, see how it fits in there pretty good? Yep. Just like that. Now the next phase is called burning in your uh, your kit, and the purpose of doing the burn in is to seat the surface of the spindle to be an exact match to the surface of your fireboard. So let me. I need this. I need this thing here that's not the poison ivy that's all over the place. I'm gonna set this in. We're going to need to get some bark off of that. There's a tree right around here that has nice flat sheets of bark. We're going to need bark off of that. How big of a piece? Uh, just enough to fit there. I think I know the one We'll do that in a minute. Wait, wait till I get this done here. Eh, that'll work. All right, here's the burn in. We're not ready to make a fire yet. We're still making the kit. I'm going to do this as a demo for the guys. Set this in here. This is put my hand hold on the top. Now look at my my stance and my position. All right, my I don't know if you can see this. My fireboard is directly underneath the bottom of my foot, the arch of my foot, so I have good control over that and make so I can clamp it into the ground and keep it stable. I'm kneeling and my arm is wrapped around. It's wrapped around my leg and jammed up against my shin so I could use my skeletal system to keep the spindle in proper position and keep it um, centered and spinning true. And then in back, I'm using my, my width of my stance to uh, improve my stability. And then my back leg will be tucked over just a little bit so I have kind of a triangle formation rather than, yeah, so yeah, stop that. Yeah, you're pretty, pretty solid. So what we're going to do now, after he's being a dick, is we're going to start spinning. I might have to deepen the, I feel it's slipping on the jewel point, I might have to make it a little bigger. Now if you notice when I'm doing this, I'm using a long, smooth stroke. I'm not working hard. I'm not breathing hard. I'm not exerting any, any effort. I'm just kind of screwing around here and seating my... Uh... There we go. All right. This dust, we want to save that dust. Okay. That dust is precious, so I'm going to take this little guy here. He's saying that's actually the key to the whole kit. Oh yeah, the dust is the key. Without and the, that nobody talks about it. This dust is magic here. So we're gonna save the magic dust, and we're gonna follow. I'm gonna put the magic dust over by Rob. Rob, the magic dust is by your hat. Don't touch your hat. Okay. I imagine it's about like char cloth, isn't it? Oh yeah, it is about like char cloth. In fact, that's uh, part of the point of it. What we have to do now is we have to get it so the char cloth or the char dust collects into a central point where it has contact with the surface, where'd my spindle go? With the heated surface of the spindle. So and that would be the notch. That's, that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna put the notch in it now. And then the notch will give us a point to collect the dust. Now I'm gonna go back to my original piece here. I'm gonna come closer to the camera so we can see it. 
See, you look at the notch. We want this notch to be as big as we can possibly make it and still keep the spindle centered in the, in the fireboard. If it gets too big, the, sp the spindle's going to wobble and it's going to get all fucked up. If it's too small, it won't be a big enough surface area to collect the heat. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to have the guys take their knives and a piece of a little chunk at a time, trim the notch into the fire, their fireboards, and then we're going to get ready to start making a lot of dust and continue on the process. So first step right now, everyone's going to do their burn-in, and then I'm going to make their notch, and then I'm going to come back. Mike is done burning his board in, and what he's done, stop spinning for a minute, is he's got his notch cut. Uh, you can't see it from here, but he's got his notch cut. The next step is to very gently fill that notch with dust. It's very important at this part not to rush the, pr the process and start get letting a lot of smoke come out of it. You don't want any heat to build up. You don't want a lot of smoke pouring off of it, because what that does is it burns your dust into ash before it collects in the, in the notch, and then it won't burn again. You can't burn it twice. You can only burn it once. So you want to have it so it heats up enough to make the dust in the first place, like a char cloth almost, only it's a dust form. But you don't want it to heat up so much that it's going to burn. And that's a time-consuming process, and it takes a lot of patience because when you start seeing the smoke, you have to stop and pull it off and let it cool down, especially with the cottonwood that we're using. Um, with cedar, cedar's not so finicky like that. You could just blow through with cedar, but this stuff, you really have to, to spin it. When you start seeing some smoke come off, you gotta stop and let it cool down and then start, and it's a process going back and forth. Yeah, see how see how it's it's smoked a little and you stop. That's good. You need a break from this, don't you? I'm gonna grab the camera here. Friction maybe? No, but go ahead and make the friction, let it smoke. Just when it starts to smoke a little bit, you know, it can smoke a little because you can remember you're charring it. So, I mean, it, uh, it can smoke some, but when it starts really pouring off, you know, like when I, like I was letting it pour off when we're seeding, that, it can start burning a little bit. And you don't want to do that. I'm going to see if I can zoom in here a little bit. Make it smoke a little bit. All right, when it gets like that, that's when you back off. Just let it cool down. And then when the smoke stops, you can start again. I'm gonna try and come from back here to just gonna see that notch. Want me to pick it up? No, that's not fine. Right there, just make your move. There you go. See, now that's the notch, and you guys can see that the dust is starting to fall into there. Oh. Zoom in a little more. And as that notch fills up, that's going to be the material that our coal is made out of. But as you can see right now, the notch is pretty empty. So an attempt to try and get a fire or a coal now is just going to be a waste of effort. So we need to go real slow and real careful and let that fill up with dust till it's really packed and then once we have that you know coal you should be able to get a coal out of cottonwood in 30 seconds or less so right now you know is the the annoying um, uh, preparation part of the game and then we get to do the fun once that's full green in my
Make sure you re-lubricate that before you put it in. Do a really good job of lubricating your handhold before you put it together. Can you hand me a leaf? Yeah. Oh, this is hickory, isn't it? Yeah, the hickory. You can make a bow out of this, like for archery. There's some, uh, we'll say, George in here, too. Oh, yeah? I thought that was a southern uh, tree. No, it's actually on the list of uh, banned trees for my city. What do you mean by banned? Well, it's a ban of Why not? It's a thorn bush. Oh, really? Thorn tree. Popular a hedgerow tree. Yeah. Because the critters won't go through it. You know, oh, yeah. I it. like thorn bushes around the house, cause especially like around your windows and stuff. Yeah, I'm getting good at growing uh, roses. Yes. Heavy duty thorn bushes all around your first floor windows are yep. ideal. It's one of the best, really, it's one of the best anti burglary things you can do. Now just work on the form first. Don't worry about getting a coal or a fire. Get your thumb to your shin. Pull your thumb to your shin. And clamp it there tight. Just focus on the form. Form is all that matters. over the center of it. Don't look at it from the side. That way your weight goes straight up and down. Clamp your thumb to your shin. Clamp your thumb to your shin. Shin is worse than my mom. and smooth. That's it. And very gently add pressure a little bit at a time. Start a finesse. Nice and smooth. Add a little more pressure, a little bit at a time. And just keep adding pressure, and if it feels like the string is going to slip back off just a little. speed up a little. Alright, stop, stop, stop. Don't move it. Oh, I can't hold the position much longer. I don't want to lose the dust either. See, I'm losing all the dust.
at it, just be square. You want a little more pressure it in it, and you're, you're on an angle is what it is. You're right, if you're forward into the, the top of it's to the forward and to the left. You gotta come back and to the right a little bit. Is that better? Not really. Yes, but not enough better. Plus your body is off center. You're not centered above directly above the spindle because you're trying to look at it. Yeah. All you want to do is look at it. Yeah, but you don't really looking at it doesn't make it work. Right. Being in the right position does. It's all about form. Relubricate the top. Yeah, it's starting to get warm. Look at the uh, look at the bottom. Relubricate the top and clean the bottom up. Like retune in the bottom so it's it's naked wood. And once you got that done, then they give it a, make your next attempt. All right, let's see what we can do. Bow strong. Sprang and knocks all my dust down. I've done that, dude. I almost cried. Alright. Oh, as long as the spider web doesn't cause friction. Thirty strokes. One, two, three, ten. Twenty. I think you got it. Ten. Yeah, now just. Just very carefully fan it. Don't do anything but fan it right now. See it? I see it burning from here, dude. You fucking did it. All right. So 
So now I need a nest. You know, right now just very carefully remove the board. Very careful. Tap it. Fanning it. You can blow it on a little bit. So, do I dump it in now? Just let it grow. Get a little bigger. This is the spark that we've seen from you? Yes. There you go. Alright, now let it set. Let it sit for a moment. Don't overblow it. Now, you need to come over here. She's blowing almost the entire thing. Oh, blows. that's good. Now, very carefully put it in the center of your tuner bundle. Angle it so the flames climb the tinder bundle. So it roll it up. It starts climbing the tinder bundle. Is it cool enough? No, you make the tinder bundle burn more. Roll it up a little, yeah, like that. Now put it under there and start. There you go. Get into your leaves and stuff. Alright, from here, start adding leaves to it as, the, as they burn away and adding leaves and sticks and leaves and sticks. Because as they burn away, they're, you're going to need to add more fuel. Okay. As long as you keep the flames going with leaves, it'll keep burning. Hey Mike, just think about... 15 seconds ago, you're rubbing two sticks together. Yeah, right? <laughs> <laughs> wow, that's hot. You did a good job. That fucking kicked ass. And you earned every bit of it, too. Uh, Let's start throwing some, some more fuel in there before it burns up. Well, I mean, at this point, it's he can keep it going, I think, at this point. It's yeah, just a matter yeah. he doesn't want to. I don't want to burn wood, though. <laughs> <laughs> well, what did I say earlier? If you can just get that coal, you can burn the whole woods down. All right, Mike. Up close and personal interaction with you. How do you feel now? <laughs> a little bit warm. A little bit warm. <laughs> so now that you've made fire like a caveman, what are you going to do next? Back to Disneyland. <laughs> I'm gonna send a text the pictures of Disneyland to my wife. Now the, the the only real difference between you and Rob is the master of the form. You've got the form down, down better than he does. That's the best I'm really still it. sloppy. Yeah, oh yeah, you are. You are. But you know that's gonna come with time and practice. That took you uh, seven minutes. Seven minutes? Seven minutes. Oh, from the time he started spinning it? The time he started spinning it until the time that he gave me the commentary. Oh.
how long did it take him from the time he started spinning it to the time he, he had the ember? I didn't look. That's that's the key. How fast you get that ember? I didn't look. Once you get the ember, Fuck, you I'm, can do anything. You can do this, Rob. You can do it. Let me get this down so I don't have to. Uh... Now when you when you blow it, there you go. <laughs> uh. Rob. That's your badge of manhood right there, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> when you do your tinder bundle, squeeze it and put it above your head when you blow. Okay. The, so when you're doing the squeezing, put it above your head, and that'll help That'll help catch it better. Yeah, because we'll, we'll yes, yeah, you want to take advantage of the fact that heat rises. Oh, sure. There you go, sir. That was fucking awesome. Thank you, sir. You're welcome. Are you ready to try it again, Rob, or should I turn the camera off for a little if bit? If you were no, eating, no. I'd buy you dinner. Actually, because you're not eating, I'll buy you dinner. How steaks sound? No. <laughs> I can't eat till tomorrow, I think. Or a lot of uh, eat what I can put on. So now I got my bow made. I'm going to uh, grab the other parts of my uh, fire bow, spindle, the fireboard and my uh, my bearing block. I put all that together, and I'm going to start spinning out a pole here in a minute. Quite a bit of water falling down here. Okay, I've now shaped that piece of wood into what's going to be. Get my can my uh audio going. Alright, Robert, are we ready here? Everyone turn the cameras on. All right, so last week, uh, my battery on my camera died while I was in the middle of giving Rob his final coaching, and I was unable to film him getting his coal and his fire. So here we are. We're out here in the rain a week later. I don't know if you guys can see the rain kind of drizzling out here in the camera. We're, we're going to film him doing this um, so I could edit that on the end of last week's film. <laughs> That's the water dripping off of that. Like, what the hell was that? Sound like a water bottle. Or a, like a bee or something. Okay. Let me restart the audio here. Alright, I'm going to record. This is, uh, Spinning a coal into a fire from a uh, bow drill set. Take number three. Okay. I now have my dust put into my notch here. I'm going to uh, spin this into a uh, coal and start a fire with it. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to prep my spindle by wrapping it into my bow. I'm going to lightly and slowly start applying pressure to my fireboard here. And try not to lose my dust out of the notch. I'm gonna very carefully push it back in there. It's uh, very, very uh, important that that notch is completely full of dust. All right, here we go. Put my spindle on the fireboard, 
bearing block on top of the spindle. I'm going to take my uh, my position and I want to start spinning this out. Okay, it is now ready to be put into my bird's nest. <laughs> 